All right then, so we have our class defined right here, but nothing in it yet. Now, the first thing we need to do inside a class is to create a constructor function. Now, a constructor function is the function that actually constructs our objects or creates them. So when we say in the future that we want to create a new user, the constructor function will be responsible for actually creating that new user object based on this class. So let's create that first of all. We do that by coming inside this class and saying constructor, and this is a function. So this is the function that's gonna fire whenever we want to create a new user object, all right? So now, whenever we want to create a new user object, at some point in our code later on, we can just say something like var user one is equal to new user. And user has a capital U. That's how it knows to look for this class right here, okay? So first of all, this new keyword right here, what is that doing? Well, I've written it down right here so we can see that. And it does three things essentially. The first thing it does is create a new empty object because at the end of the day, we're just creating a new user object, right? So it creates that empty object. Then what it does is take that object and it sets the value of this inside this class to be the new empty object. So remember that keyword, this, right? Whenever we refer to this inside the class, then it's the new object that this just created, okay? So it refers to that. Then what it does is it calls this constructor method, so then we can go about adding properties onto that object by using this keyword. We could say something like this.email equals something, or this.name is equal to something, right? So when we're calling this constructor, we're taking this new object that we've just created down here, and we're attaching new properties to it. Now then, we don't want to hard code these properties. I don't want to set this equal to, say for example, Ryu at ninjas.com, and then down here, the same, Ryu, like that. I don't want to do that, because then whenever we create a new user, no matter what it is, if I copy this and paste it underneath and call this user2, then both of these instances of the user, both of these objects, are gonna have the same email property and the same name. And we don't really want that. The whole idea is to create different instances of this user object with different values for the properties. So what we need to do is find out a way to pass in information here when we create the user into the constructor method. And we can do that really simply just using arguments right here. So for example, we could say in the constructor, we want to receive two arguments. We want to receive the email and also the name. So two variables we're expecting when a user creates a new user. So let's pass those in. I could say right here, okay, well, user one is gonna have an email of Ryu at ninjas.com. And then the second argument is gonna be the name. And the name of this user is Ryu, okay? So then when we call new user and we're calling this constructor, we're passing these two values into here. And so inside this constructor, we have access to them. And instead of hard coding something, I could just say, well, this.email is now equal to email that we passed in. So this thing right here. And this.name is now equal to name, okay? So that makes much more sense because every time we're creating a new user now, we're creating it with different values. So for the second user, we could say Yoshi at MarioCorp.com and the name is gonna be Yoshi, okay? So then we have two different user objects now, and they're both gonna have different values for these email and name properties. So that's cool. So really quickly again, from the beginning, when we say we want a new user, the new keyword is doing three things, creating an empty object, then it sets the value of the keyword this inside the class to be equal to that new empty object. So we have access to that empty object via the, this keyword. Then it's calling the constructor function inside the user class because we specified that right here. We're passing in these values into the constructor. Then we're attaching the email property and the name property to that new object, the empty object it just created. And we're setting it equal to the values we passed in as arguments right here. Okay, so now we have two objects. Let's try logging those to the console. I'll say console.log. First of all, user one. 
and then underneath console dot log and it will be user two. All right then, let's spell this correctly like so. Let's save this now and check it out in a browser over here. And we can see user one, first of all, Ryu at ninjas.com and the name is Ryu. We can see those two properties right there. And user two, when we log it to the console, Yoshi at mariocorp.com and Yoshi for the name. So you can see already how much easier this way of doing things is. Much less code to create two separate versions of the same kind of object.